Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're going to do the Druid's Guide. So that's basically a, a guide for you guys to build your Druid on level 1. And then what do you, what can you take for other levels? I won't go into spells here. I'm doing a spells guide that will cover countries, spell level 1s and spell level 2. But on this guide I will mention spells, but not describe or show them, alright? So first and foremost, we need to choose the best rate for a druid. Um, and to do that, we need to know what does a druid do? What is a druid, right? So druids channel the elemental force of nature and share deep kinship with animals. Mastery with wild shape allows them to transform into beasts from all over the realms. Right, that's pretty great. So we are going to we are going to have a look on these um, beast forms, all right? But first, let me see what do, what we get. So we get for hit points a D8. So level one, we start with eight hit points, maximize it, right? I like how it's sixteen here and hit points twelve here. That's because I'm I chose dwarf, shield dwarf, and the shield dwarf gets plus one hit point per level. So. D8 maximized as 8, plus 3 from my constitution, 11, plus 1 for the shield dwarf. Yeah. So we get spells. We are a full caster. We're going to get the 9th level, 17th, on the 9th level spell slots on 17th level, like other full casters. Um, I have Wisdom Saving Throw Proficiency, that's pretty good. One of the best in the game, if not the best. Intelligence of the profession, that's not very good, but that is very good, you know, against what? Against um, psionic effects, against mind flayers, um, intellect devourers, so it might be very good going forward on this game because there is a theme here. We can use light armor, medium armor, we can use shield, and we get the profession with some weapons here, a little bit of them, and we get a list of spells. So I'm not going through them now. All right. So what would they do with it? We want to. We're a spellcaster, right? So we want to maximize our wisdom. Good. Uh, currently, we have two subclasses. We, we're going to do a subclass guide to talk about it. But basically, one is the more casters of them, and the other is the more fighter of them. Why I say that? Because one of them will get like more spells per day, basically. The other will get a new wild shape form. So uh, basically, he he will be able to turn into a bear, which which is very strong, at least on this state of the game. Okay, so by being a prime primary caster, we want to have our primary casting attribute to maximize. That's wisdom. So I would say that any race that gives us wisdom is a good thing for doing. We have Wood Elves, that will give Wisdom, Humans, Half Elves, you can choose to get Wisdom, and Dwarfs. These are the only races here that will give us Wisdom. And from these races, I think Dwarf is a better race. I said Shield, but I said the wrong Dwarf. The Gold Dwarf is a better race, because we get plus two Constitution, some weapons, which is useless, alright? Dark Vision, which is nice. It's Dwarven and Tuffs that give us more hit points and ratio speed. Why do I want this Dwarf? Well, because Constitution is very important for casters to maintain concentration. And that's pretty much it. But I will say something. If you're going to make a Moon Druid and then you're going to rely on your Wild Shape, and when you're Wild Shape, you take the form of the beast. And you lose your physical stats, then you could pretty much have any physical stats and do good with that. So, you, but so you can make a point that a wood elf would be better because a wood elf would get um, this thing stealth and fleet of hope even faster. But you would also lose that when now and when animal form, right? In beast form. So, hmm. I don't know. Because the druid, if you if you're going for the moon druid, which is the warrior druid, the one that relies a lot in wild shape, because he you will you will want to stay the maximum you can in your wild shape form, and actually, is almost 
all the same what race you get if you get your wisdom maximizer. I say that because um, when your wild shape form is over, you want your wisdom maximizer to cast stuff, so I think it's wise. But if you're going to do the other dude, then, well, you can, I think the best thing to do is to maximize your constitution, so because you have concentration spells that are good, so you won't lose them, and then maximize your dexterity for your armor class, so that would be 14th armor class, because um, medium armor can only get up to plus 2 bonus from dexterity, so with a dwarf we can actually do very nice, because we can start for a wizard 16th and Constitution 16th, and then we can put the Exterior 14th, and we have 4 points to choose, so we could go 10 Strength, and let's say, I don't know, 10 Charisma, or you could remove all Strength and get more Charisma and be a little bit more social, or if you don't want to be a stupid door, you just put a little bit of Intelligence, so you can play around this. If you really want to increase more your other stats, I guess you can go for 14th constitution and then you can, man, you can go overboard here, you know, see? Not be a, a neat beat. I, I don't even know the name in English. We think, we, yeah, whatever, you can see. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, for Boom Dude, I would go to off and do what I said first. If I'm doing the other Dude, then. And then it's alright to pick whatever you want. Um, I mean, the, uh, the opposite, sorry. For one druid, pick whatever you want. For the other druid, I think that's very good. Not that, right? For the other druid, I think that's a very good base. And then you spend 4 points, whatever you want. I would probably do 12 strength, right? Because I hate to be encumbered all the time. But then you're going to be very poorly social. But well, we have to sacrifice some stuff. Now for the skills, we have wisdom, right? So we want things that give us wisdom. Uh, this one I chose the outlander background because it was the only one that would be nice if dude. And because we need one of athletics acrobats to resist being pushed around, pushed around. Acrobats would be better, right? Because our strength is not as big as the dexterity, but I hate to think about dwarf, a dwarf acrobat, so I can't, can't, I can't do it. Uh, survivor is nice because there is wizard, it is wizard based, although the game does not use a lot of survivor here. We have two free ones to choose. I would go for nature. Well, we are druid, right? So mm, I would say something. You have animal handling and nature. You should have to choose one, but animal handling. I find it very bad because as a druid you have a spell that you can talk to animals so you can actually use other stuff on animals so I would personally get perception because that's wisdom based and that's a very good skill okay and I don't know sight or the wisdom base and to be very fair if you want to not be an outlander I think it would be good to get a background that gives you persuasion so you can Try and talk a little bit with your druid. Okay, and now for a little bit of selection of spells, just the beginning. So here the, the, the druids cantrips. We have two new cantrips here. A free, free new cantrip for the druids. Produce flame, shilag. I don't know how to say that. I have no. I think no one knows. And thorn whip. Um, you need to choose two on the beginning. I would say. Pick one that's ranged, that's produce flame, that's ranged, range one, and then pick a melee one. These are two melee ones, um, and you can choose whatever you want. This one will actually uh, pull the creature to yourself a little bit, and this one you enchant your weapon, and you can club, clobber at people with your wisdom. I don't know, I, I do like that. I think that's alright. But you do have Guidance, that is a very good character, so if you don't plan to walk around with Shadowheart, then dump one of them for Guidance, please, do that. And for Prepare Spells, to start the... The Druid is a Druid, he knows all the spells from their level, so you can always change it. But to start between two healing spells, Kill Wounds, Healing Ward, Healing Ward always, that's a bonus action, right? So I always pick any Ward. 
and level one, uh, I think Thunder Wave always essential because blow stuff away. Uh, I will start with Speak of Animals, although inside an Nautiloid that spell is useless. So maybe you want to memorize it after leaving the Nautiloid, okay? So on the Nautiloid you can have something like, I don't know, jump maybe, yeah? And, well, I think that's the best spells for doing level 1. Uh, but there are some uses for this stuff and then once you know how to use it, you can memorize however. Whenever you want, so unless you're in combo, so that's pretty easy. So guys, level two, you get wild shape feature. That's the feature that really makes so the druids or druids. Uh, you have two types of druids for now, land and moon, and the the wild shape are difficult for them because moon druid is the only druid in the game as of right now. I'm talking about D and D that can wild shape as a bonus action. So I got the Moon Druid here because I can choose one, one more form. But all other Druids, the end Druid there is now in the game, and all the Druids that they add won't be able to wild shape into beasts as a bonus action, will be as an action. So I have to take that in mind. So, first form that all Druids will have here on Baldur's Gate, let's, let's go to the Badger form. Become a nice, nice big badger, right? Yeah, and the badger is and these things have thirty hit points, so not not a lot, not a lot, not the best. And he's not very good at hitting stuff, also. But the badger, it does have a very nice power. Basically, the badger allows you to do a super jump, or maybe let's call it a, even a missy step. You have this action here, the burrow. And look at the range, right? So say your druid is here, burrow. You can actually burrow and jump. With the burrow, you can jump through ledges. Kind of silly, but hey, nature's magic, right? So yeah, so that's very good form for mobility because you can do that unlimited amount of times. So with that, your druid will never be, will never have a problem on reaching anywhere. Tiring, Shadowheart. By all means, leave Look. if I am so distasteful. Magic here, the bottle. I'd rather not turn my back on you. To the if it's all the same. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's crazy. Think about it. That is crazy. So that's the power of the badger. Uh, who mobility the druid, so just move however you want. And you have a claw action here, you know, it's, it's, it is not very strong, but if you need to fight on this form, it can fight a little bit. And don't worry, once you get, once they do you, they, you're they dealt 13 hit points, you won't die. You just revert to your, to your druid form. That was the badger. Okay, for our second wild shape, and keep in mind that the druid can only wild shape two times a day and then once your short rest it recharges but only recharge once per short rest so even though you have two short rest you only be able to recharge this a bit once so in total you can wild shape for four times a day it's a little bit strange how Larian put that up on DD game you can wild shape for, uh, two times per short rest recharging every time you short rest but let's do now the second form form of a wild spider Transformation is amazing and the spider is amazing. So now let's have the spider climb this. So I'm not saying the spider can climb walls, but it can move much better in situations where a humanoid wouldn't be able to move a lot. Oh, first you terrify the goblins, that's great. They like move away from you. Look at that. You click here, the spider can actually do that. And I don't think as a druid, as a human, you can do that as easily. So your move, your movement on places like that is pretty good. I'm guessing they can do this kind of stuff because this jump is better. So you have this thing called Arachne Jump, and you jump very far away. So like the Badger, you can use the Spider for mobility, but the Badger, it is better in my opinion. So the Badger still has the better mobility of the two, but not for a big margin. Uh, and well, the other stuff is nice. Well, the spider wouldn't be able to move, jump 
to so high like the badger can with the burrow ability. But now the spider also has a combat action that's very useful. That's a web. So it's a bonus action. You can web an area. I web this goblin here. They feel that same intro. So they, they are web. And web means. Um, it, 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 it came off very easy. But and web means. Uh, they can't move. Attack rolls against them have advantage. And they have disadvantage to attack rolls. Also, the adventure that starts having throws. So, that's pretty strong ability to think about it. Very, very, very strong. That's why I'm just that again. It's funny that they don't mind you you're webbing them. What is that for? Yeah, I am. Why are we doing that? Huge evil spider. And also, as a. As a spider, you have your bite. They were friendly, now they're, they're, they're pissed at me. Though. But see the damage they took. So the spider actually is pretty decent fighting because it will attack using its dexterity, I think. Yeah, it will attack using its dexterity, so that's a plus three to attack and put pl more plus your proficiency. So that's as good as any class attacking on this level before level four. And uh, the damage is only one d eight plus three. That's all right. And then they have to make a constitution saving throw to not be poisoned. If they fail to the poison, they are poisoned. That means they have disadvantage to attack rolls for one turn. So yeah, uh, it's pretty good. A very decent form on the beginning of the game, right? As but as sure as life goes, go, it won't be as good anymore. But look at this mobility here. I'll take damage, of course. They put my spider to sleep. Alright, I'm guessing I have 17 HP, right? So sleep can do that. I'm still sleeping. Uh, not anymore now. Alright. I'll be attacked by outsiders. But as always, whenever they do too much damage, you just turn back to your druid form. But no big deal. Okay, now for our third wild shape form, we get to do the wild shape form into wolf. I think our, from the normal druids, the, the, the druids that are not the moon druids, they, I think the wolf form is meant to be the one using combat the most. Why? Because the wolf will attack with strength, so that's a plus three to attacks, that's pretty good. The wolf will bite stuff, they did two the six plus three, so that, that's attacking like a fighter. That's wearing, uh, that's wielding a great sword. That's so that's as good as any martial class before you reach level four. So that's pretty strong. You have 18 hit points, but if you, if they destroy hit points, are just going to turn to a druid form, and you can assume another wolf form if you need with an action, your action. And the wolf also have two stuff, two two abilities here. So one is inciting how, once per battle, you charge every battle and how. And everyone can move more during the next, next turn. That's not the best action, but I can see some uses for it. Yeah. And the other one is the Exposing Bite. So that's an action you take instead of your regular bite. And they will take less damage. And if you hit, attacks against them from your allies will be critical hits. So that. It is so strong, I can't stress it out. Imagine you're taking on a huge boss, alright? A big guy. Then you do that and you expose them to critical if you hit. Every every other attack from your allies will be critical. So that's very, very strong. And that you can do that all for short rest. Well, let's walk, let's wake up this bug right here for bites. Bite so strong, critical hit. He's already hurt. Let's bite him again. Die. You see, that's pretty decent. I'm ashamed both tears died on this game, otherwise you could show it on the But that's the wolf form. 
So I think that's your strongest form in combat. Sometimes it might be better to use the fighter, but usually the wolf is the way to go. And look at this guy, he's so fluffy. Much better than the spider in this, in this spec. So he won the battle in appearance against the spider 10 times over. Now I want to show you the I want to show you guys the cat wild shape. So basically I was sent to prison, as you can see, the sound the alarm. I just broke from prison. Prison, so that's not good. So sound the alarm, sound the alarm, prison is gone, sound the alarm. What you can do is to assume a form of a cat. No, not, not here. Become a nice little cat. So fluffy, so nice. Look, you can walk around now and people are not judging you anymore. They're not sounding the alarm, they're not saying the prisoner is gone. So you can move around without causing suspicions. And not only that, the cat have a special ability. Uh, not the cat, not the claws, the meow. It can meow. And also meow. You actually attract NPCs. See? So you can kind of move NPCs to where you want. Why would you do that? Well, maybe you want to make so everyone, maybe in a goblin encampment or maybe, maybe here, is on the same area, so you can AOE them. Or, or even the, the rats. Or maybe you want to distract everyone while we pick pockets with your other NPCs elsewhere. So they are leaving their station, so now you can go around, you can now. you can pick uh, you can steal stuff you could you wouldn't be able to steal before. You can pick I've people's pockets. And so there are some uses here, you know. Uh, there are some uses. displacing people and it's always like nice. And I was like change the situation here. Look at the stealth uh, look at the stealth um, radius there. Right. Now it's changed the situation by displacing people and you have to use your own creativity for it. And also you are a nice cat now that they able to meow. So that, that's a plus side. Look at this thing meowing. Yeah. And now you have also a graceful jump. <laughs> but not, right? That jumps like a brick, I don't know why. The haste jumping. The haste jumping. Yeah, I think. No helping it. Exposed now. You have to just put the meow on the hot key. It'll be better to pressing it and then meow your way. Alright, that was the cat wild shape. And with that guys, that concludes all the wild shapes, the regular wild shapes for the the truths. You know, because you have four forms, and the Moon Druid has the bear form, which is combat based guards, form. But we will talk about the bear form on the subclass guide. Thank you all for watching, and oh, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet.